around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. this here Dodge City you've been talking about, Harvey? It's a far piece yet, I reckon. Uh, if you ask me, it's about as far away as a man can get without starting back again. Yeah, and all this heat. Ain't this the dangest weather you ever seen? Oh, I don't know. I've seen danger. Here. Where? Well, I'm a pointing, ain't I? Oh. Why, it's a wagon and a bunch of people. Cooking food. It's only a man and a woman, Merle. Probably his wife. Well, they're cooking food. Harvey, we ain't it in two days. Maybe they'll throw us a little something. Come on. Uh. Hello, people. Hello. Get down, step over. Where are you where are you riding to? Dodge City, if we can ever find it. Yeah, I ain't never been there. We're headed for California. This here's my wife, Laminda. Howdy. How do? What's that you're cooking in the stew pot? Oh, just potatoes and beans. Mighty little of that. Uh, sorry we can't offer you none. I wouldn't mind taters and beans, mister. I ain't yet in two days. My twin brother here ain't yet either. Well, I sure am sorry, but there ain't even enough for me and the woman as it is. Had real bad luck finding game. We was kind of counting on a little something to eat, mister. Today's Sunday, too. Huh? Uh, here, I'll give him a dab of it. No. Uh, uh, it just ain't enough, I tell you. Joe... Maybe we'd better give him something. Merle? What, Harvey? There's too many mouths to feed around here. Uh, that's a sure truth, mister. And I'm mighty sorry. You better saddle up and move on. I don't know if we're ready. Uh, look, mister. Now, don't reach for that rifle. It ain't fitting to handle weapons on a Sunday. You turn around, mister, and get out. <laughs> you shot him. I reckon I did. My husband. You killed my husband. He had no call to poke his weapon at us that way. All we want is dinner. Joe. Oh, Joe. Dang fool. Joe. Merle, make that woman shut up. Are we going to eat, Harvey? Joe. Uh, Might as well. Lady, lady, please. We're kind of sorry about how things turned out. Kind of sorry. Uh, it makes us feel bad to hear you carrying on so. Kind of sorry. Hear that, Joe? We're kind of sorry. Sorry you're dead. Oh, now, lady. I'm Joe. you got to sorry, too, Joe. <laughs> Where are you going, lady? Lady. Where at the woman going, Merrill? She didn't tell me, Harvey. She just kept talking to herself and walked away. Yes, yes, well. One thing I can't stand is a noisy woman. <laughs> me too. Say, hey, that looks good. And load your plate. We can eat our fill now. Uh-huh. <laughs> Say, 
We got to do something about that team of horses tied up out over there. Now, Merle, we we ain't going to thieve them. Oh, never did hold for stealing, remember? Oh, I wouldn't steal nothing, Harvey. You know that. But we can't leave them poor beasts tied up. Be downright cruel. Well, then turn them loose. I don't reckon these people will need them anymore anyhow. Give me another bunch of that stew, Harvey. It's mighty tasty. can't understand it, Mr. Dillon. What in the world was she doing way out there? I don't know, Chester. Poor little thing. All alone like she was. What you reckon killed her? Uh, thirst, I imagine. No one could last long this far out on the prairie without water. Awful hard to die like that, ain't it? All alone, me. Yeah. I sure am glad we fixed that little marker for a grave, though. Somehow it kind of helps, don't it? Yeah, it does. Look yonder, Mr. Dillon. Must be another immigrant heading west by the looks of that wagon. That's a funny place to make camp, though. In the middle of the day. Ain't no smoke coming up. No. Hey, there's a man lying asleep right near the fire pit. See there? Yeah, if he is asleep. What do you mean? Come on. Why, he's dead, Mr. Jones. You reckon it was Indians? I don't know, but at least he's not scalped. It's cold. It looks like there was a bunch of people eating here. All in the pans and that stew pot. Yeah, there's something else. What? It's this. This apron. Well, if there was a woman here, she'd... So this is where she come from. That woman we buried. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Well, why in the world would she wander off like that from camp? Whoever killed this man probably ran her up. Oh, nobody wouldn't do a thing like that, Mr. Dillon. Would they? Let's take a look in the wagon. Don't look like they had nothing worth stealing, does it? Poor as church mice. Well, then what'd they get killed for if it wasn't Indians and nobody never stole nothing? Chester, who killed these people or why is beyond me. It sure don't make sense, does it? No, none at all. Well, I guess the only thing we can do now is to get him buried. Yes, sir. Jag wood for the fire. Why? Man, it took you long enough. I don't want to have to go back for more in the dark, Harvey. Don't you like this camp, Merle? Oh, it's a tolerable fair camp. Why? Oh! Well, what's that? A man on a horse. But I've had my eye on him some little while. Good thing. Hello, you. Mind if I light a spell? Get down, stranger. (sighs) 
name's Bud Grant. Well, our name is Finney. Harvey and Murrah Finney. We're twins. Where you headed for, cowboy? Dodge. By golly, we've been trying to find Dodge for days and days. Where is it at, anyways? Why, well, it's about 40 miles over yonder. Never mind where's Dodge. You st- Yeah, it does. Look, young know, Harry Merrill. Nah, Indians is all alike to us. What are you talking about? Uh, you're as dumb as the rest of them, Grant. Oh, never mind him, Harvey. Nobody out on the prairie knows nothing about where there's Indians. What do you want Indians for? I don't understand. You leave it to us what we want Indians for. You hungry? Hmm? Oh, um, well, yeah. I reckon I could eat something. We shot a antelope this afternoon. It's been boiling in the pot there for quite a spell. <laughs> Be ready for long. Well, that's mighty good of you. Uh, sit down, Grant. I'll get me a knife and poke around the pot some. Meat might be done already. I better see to my horse first. Oh, I'll stake him out for you, Grant. You're probably plum tuckered out riding all day. Yeah, just uh, pour yourself some coffee. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I sure ain't used to hospitality like this. Eh, hey, being Sunday, we ain't hardly done a thing all day, Grant. Hmm. I say, that's right. I plumb forgot about Sunday. Man ought to rest one day a week, huh? Our pa always said so. He must have been a right religious man, your pa. Yep. Sundays he was always sleeping off a drunk. He didn't hold the fighting and killing on the Sabbath. No. Well, last Sunday somebody sure must have got drunk. Or something. Why? A family got wiped out east of here. Some pilgrims traveling to California. Man and his wife. Indians, huh? Dog, gun it. Why didn't you tell me they was Indians around? I didn't say it was Indians. Fact is, I heard they wasn't scalped or nothing. Oh. Uh, I declare, you can be plumb disappointing. All I said was it must have been somebody drunk or crazy. Are you saying it was us, Dennett? Me and Merle? No, look here, man. I didn't say nothing like that. Well, it was. What? You did it? You you killed him? Only killed the man. The woman ran off. Must have died. You're crazy. You know it all along, didn't you? That's why you come here. No, that ain't true. I didn't know anything. Look at me, boy. <laughs> What's the matter, Harvey? Got shot in his belly. It's a killing him. You, uh, you done it? Well, I had to, Merle. He found out we killed that fella last week. Don't know how he figured it, but he knowed too much. Got to talking real loose. I wish you'd told me, Harvey. Now I got his horse staked out and everything. Well, go turn him loose. Supper's about ready. All right. But don't you start eating before I get back. I won't. <laughs> You heard about that cowboy they found out on the prairie, huh? Yeah. A couple of riders found his horse running loose nearby and brought them both in today. Hmm. There's nothing missing, though, Kitty. Not even the $30 he had in his pocket. Oh, thank you. What? Maybe it was the same murderer who killed that man and his wife a couple of weeks ago, man. I don't know, Kitty. Three people murdered and there doesn't seem to be any reason for it. 
Well, it doesn't leave you much to go on, does it? No, it sure doesn't. Marshal Dillon. What? We want to talk to you. Sit oh. down, Merle. All right, Harvey. <laughs> My name is Harvey Finney. My twin brother's name is Merle Finney. Nobody in this town knows nothing, Marshal. Well, I bet you two could teach him a lot. Look at her. I sure ain't never gonna get married. You old ape. What do you men want, anyway? Indians. Hey, we can't find no Indians nowhere, Marshal. Nowhere at all. What are you gonna do, join them? No, we ain't gonna join them. We're gonna kill them. We come west to kill Indians, Marshal. You gotta help us find some. Nobody else will. Uh-huh. Oh, maybe they got a reason not to, mister. Just because they're dumb. No, just because maybe they don't want a pair like you to stir up an Indian war. Now, I don't know what your reasons are, but I'm telling you to forget about killing Indians and go on back home where you belong. Oh, he ain't no more use than the rest of them, Harvey. Oh, wait a minute, I'm curious. Why do you men want to go Indian hunting anyway? We read it in a book. You what? Now, that's a lie, Merle. You know Paul never did hold with lying. Well, all right. We can't read, but a fella back home, he told us about this book. It, it was all about Indians murdering white men, scalping them and everything like that. So you came out here to murder Indians, is that it? Oh. Come on, Merle. He's as dumb as the rest of them. told you he ain't going to be no help, Harvey. <laughs> Well, they act even worse than they look. Yeah. Well, you don't think you have to worry about anybody as brainless as they are causing trouble. I sure do, Kitty. It's the brainless ones that are the most dangerous. Big excitement in the auto industry. Now, Matt. Uh. Matt, where are you? Sleeve, huh? <laughs> I didn't see you over here. Uh, with a voice like yours, you don't have to see, Doc. Now, don't get a hump in your back. I'm not charging you for this visit. Uh, well, what are you doing here? <clears throat> Why, it's Sunday. People are supposed to socialize on Sunday. They are, huh? It's just my luck to draw you, then. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. Chronicles. Chronicles? Huh? Oh, well. <laughs> Are you holding something back, Matt? Uh, did you used to be a preacher? Well, didn't I ever tell you, Doc? Why'd you quit? <laughs> I lost my battle with the devil, Doc. The pay was too small to support my gambling habit. Well, that's fine talk. From the upholder of the law, the figure of justice, the citadel of virtue. Well, let's go get a drink. Huh? Oh, oh, that's different. <laughs> fine. What's that... doing? Yeah, what's the matter, Chester? Oh, them Finney twins. Harvey and Merle, there's going to be trouble, sure. Oh, well, what are they up to? Well, you know how they've been talking about finding Indians killed? Well, for a joke, some darn fool told them Moss Grimmick, the full-blooded Cherokee. Oh. I just heard about it. Oh, Moss Grimmick, we grew at the stable? It ain't <laughs> funny, Doc. That pair is crazy enough to do anything. Yeah, you're right, Chester. Let's get over there. Table door is closed, Mr. Jones. You have been in here. So we'll have a look anyway. It's kind of dark in here. I can't see too good. Let's take a look in the back. Right. Quiet now. Yes, sir. Haven't you got that rope tied yet, Merle? Yes, Sam. Quiet. I'm getting it, Harvey. Won't remember listening to me. I swear I ain't going to win you. Oh, you shut up. Mr. Don, they're up there in Hayloft. Yeah, I see him. Look, they, they got a rope around Moss Grimmick's neck and up over that bean there fixing to push him off and hang him. 
Okay, Harvey, the rope for the guy. Let's get closer. You can't do this, mister. I got a big family. Then your family ain't gonna get no bigger, you murdering Cherokee. I'm not a Cherokee. I'm German. Can't you tell that? It don't matter what tribe, as long as you're an Indian. Push him off, Harvey. Wait, wait, you don't understand. You got this all mixed up. I'm going to shut you up right now. All right, hold it, Harvey. You touch him and I'll shoot. Marshal. Marshal, thank heaven. I mean what I say, Harvey. Oh, it's that dumb Marshal. Yeah, I know he was no good siding with Indians. Marsh Grimmick's no more Indian than you are. Now you get that rope off his neck. I ain't going to do it. I'm going to push him off. You'll die for it, Harvey. No, you'll probably miss me from there. He's going to do it, Marshal. Harvey, now you listen to me. I'll make a deal with you. You come out to the edge of the loft so I can talk to you. Well, all right. See, Harvey, we was right. Now he's even craving for this dirty redskin. Hey, you men got eyes. How could I be a redskin? Engines is powerful tricky. We know all about him. Now, hold your breath. You're going now. Harvey, wait. Too late, Marshal. All right, Marshal. I said hold it. Bumble you. <laughs> You hit them both, Mr. Dillon. I only winged them. Hey, don't shoot no more. We're coming down. All right, take the rope off that man and hurry it up or I'll put another bullet on you. All right, all right. I'm taking it off. You let him come down first. Hey, maybe he weren't an Indian. Moss? Yeah. Are you okay? I think so, Marshal. Still just a mite nervous. You better sit down over there. All right, you two. Come on, get on down here. All right, all right. Okay. Mm, the wind hurts the man. Uh, he busted my arm. Got me in the shoulder. Doc will fix you up. In jail. We going to jail? Yeah, your Indian hunting days are over for good, Merle. Well, doggone... Then we made this whole trip for nothing. Never killed one Indian, Harvey. Just a few white people. Huh? What's that? Oh, yeah, dumb fool, Merle. Why did you tell him that? Well, I wasn't talking to him, Harvey. I was talking to you. You're the man who shot those immigrants, huh? Well, Merle done told you. No use denying it now. And that cowboy, you killed him too, didn't you? I didn't say that. It don't make no difference now, Merle. No, it sure doesn't. You're going to hang anyway. Hang? That's right. Marshal, I, I think I'd sooner not be hung if I had my sooners. Yeah, but you haven't. Hey, wait a minute. Merle, I just figured out what we done wrong. What, Harvey? We plumb forgot about how it was Sunday both times. Oh. That man and woman and then that cowboy. You know, Paul never did hold for killing people on Sunday. By golly, you're right. And today's Sunday too, Harvey. Well, of all that doggone bad luck. All right, you two. The jail's on down the street. Just walk straight ahead. You don't have to be an expert electrician to troubleshoot the electric motors about your home. Nine times out of ten, you can save yourself time, trouble, and steep repair bills by fixing it yourself with simple tools and materials. A new 20-page book that tells you what to do if a motor runs hot, loses power, or plays dead, whether it's a little electric razor, a cake mixer, or a big oil burner. This booklet is yours free when you get the February Popular Science Magazine at your newsstand. The booklet is bound right in. Also, this month's Popular Science tells you how to use your car as a gluing press. Be your own tree surgeon. Fix that leak in your car windshield. Thaw frozen pipes quicker. Make your own seven-way sanding wedge, king-size medicine chest, a swing-within-reach bedside table, folding doors, desktop picture frame. Get popular science at your newsstand. 282 pages, 380 pictures. To win new friends, it's only 25 cents this month. 10 cents off the regular price. Look for the bright blue band on the cover. Popular Science Magazine. <laughs> Smoke. Produced and directed by Norman McDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. 
Featured in the cast were Joseph Kearns, Ralph Moody, Jack Boyles, James Musser, Gene Bates, and Sam Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNeil is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. <laughs> 